Today, we are creating a work of art inspired by tact and our newest exhibition. Let's go. Hello friends, my name is Angela. I'm a teaching artist at First Art Museum Miami. And today I am in the Artist as Poet exhibition at First Art Museum Miami. And I have a very special guest who's gonna tell us a little bit more about it. Hello friends, today we're taking an inside look into the Artist as Poet, the latest exhibition at First Art Museum Miami. And I'm joined by curator Maritza Lacayo. Hi, Maritza. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here with us today. I have so many questions about this exhibition. But the first thing that I want to ask you is, what's the inspiration behind it? So the inspiration behind the whole show really came from when I was doing my master's thesis in 2013, where I really took the time to study not only surrealism, but surrealism's founder, um, Andre Breton, and his definition of what is called the poem object. So this artwork that combines both text and object together and both being equally important in the creation of the work. And I thought to myself, how can I tell this story in a contemporary way? How can I tell the story through the Pam Permanent Collection? How can we explore this idea of text and object coming together? And so the artist's poet is really a, a result of that reflection. What is the process of choosing all of the artworks like for you? before staging the exhibition? It requires diving pretty deep into the permanent collection and looking at you know, all of the works that we have and figuring out whether or not they could or couldn't work, uh, researching them and trying to find ways in which they might be able to work thematically. And then it's a matter of cutting. It's, a, it's, it's really about editing down which works I think are the strongest and which ones are gonna help me tell that story in the best way. So it's, it's really a lot of kind of alone time, a lot of reading, a lot of researching, and then narrowing it down to what I think makes the strongest show. One of the things that we're going to do now that we have explored a little bit of the exhibition is that we're actually going to make a work of art inspired by it. So stay with me and let's make some art. Absolutely. Okay, Marita, are you ready to make some art? Absolutely. Okay, so the first thing I have is my two pieces of watercolor paper, which were actually one page, nine by 12 is fine, but really any size you have will work. And I cut both pieces. I cut it into two pieces and divide it into thirds. Now, I want something a little bit longer for the sketchbook. So I'm going to glue these two pieces together. And this is what you get. When you glue these two pieces together, it's you're gonna get one long accordion-like piece. Uh, now, I also want to create a cover and a back cover, just like the books that we saw at the exhibition. Right. So I have these thicker pieces of, this is actually handmade watercolor uh, paper. It has so much of a rough texture, but really any rough cardstock, even, um, uh, anything that's made out of a cardboard, cardboard you can use. Yeah. Anything you have at home, you can use. So the first thing that I do is that I try to measure more or less that this paper is somewhat center. And if it helps you to make marks with a pencil, then you do that. I do that very often just to make sure that I'm as close as I can to be in the center. Um, I'm going to use my... Um, brush that's specific for glue but really you can use an old brush you can use um, a craft stick anything that you have that you think you can use for this purpose at home so I'm going to use a little bit of it I am going to put some munch podge here on the this part of the paper and if you want to maybe use something that's a little bit more long lasting, especially if you're an artist, you're creating something that you want for archival purposes, then I also have this type of glue that's called uh, PVA neutral glue. Um, and what that means is that it just doesn't yellow over time, doesn't get yellow. Yeah, so we're gonna do, put a little bit of this, okay? And I'm go going to do this on both sides. I put enough 
that I know it's going to secure the paper, but not so much that it might just kind of run all over the place when I pre press the paper on top right. of it. Okay, so uh, just gonna go ahead and place it here. I do one side first. I press it, I'm gonna use my paper folder to push it a little bit. Um, you can also use a ruler if you have a ruler at home. And then I'm going to just go ahead and let it dry for a little bit. Um, something I use sometimes is a big book. I'll put a big book on top of it and that usually helps with making sure that it dries in the correct place. So right now I'm just gonna put this aside for now because I have some already pre-made and we're going to go ahead and start adding the content to our accordion books, okay? So Marita and I have some that we made earlier and this right, is so. how they look once they're finished. It's very nice and you can use this for so many different things. For now, we're gonna use this to create a work of art inspired on the artist as poet exhibition and since we saw so much text on the exhibition and then one of the parts of the ex exhibition is really focused on self-reflection yeah um i think i'm gonna do i'm gonna create mine focused on a poem that i've been thinking about um and uh, what do you think yours is going to be about maritza so you're absolutely right. The, the idea of self-reflection is so important for these works and, and the process itself is really meant to be a process of self-reflection. So something that means a lot to me is the idea of just using your voice and uh, saying what you need to say and speaking out about things that you think are important. So I think I'm going to reflect that in, in, in mine. In yours. All yeah. right. So I'm going to use my um i'm gonna just start with the inside of my piece um with some of the cutouts that i already have and i have this the lower part of a face of a woman and then i also have this really neat um sort of drawing with the head of a horse and the body of a woman so the first thing that i'm going to you use is work on the collage but you can also Hey, so Marita and I are going to use different processes. Um, let's see what we end up with. So is the best option to, if you have magazine cutouts or images, is the best option to go ahead and glue those first before you start decorating? I or? think it depends on what you're doing because for me, I'm going to leave most of this side white and then just add some dots of paint. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do the gluing first. But if you decide that you're going to color the entire surface of the paper, mm -hmm. you might want to do the watercolor first and then okay. the gluing. Okay, yeah, so it that depends might be a better option for me. on the entire composition. And that's something that I've talked about in previous videos is thinking about the composition first, how you want the end result to look like, and that's going to help you figure it out how the process is going to be. Yeah. yeah. So for and me... And not be afraid of mistakes, right? <laughs> well, there isn't such a thing as mistakes in art, right? True. And even some of the things that maybe you had in envisioned first might end up becoming your most favorite parts of the works of arts that you do. So I always, even though I have an idea of what I'm creating, I always leave space for um, a surprise or for changing my vision if in the process I, I discover something new or something that I think is going to be a nice addition to, to the project. Yeah, and I, and I think that leaving the work up to chance to a certain extent yeah. is part of you know part of the process part of the work and for me at least I, you know i'm i'm not an artist i'm definitely learning a lot from you today but i think the idea of like letting go of control mm -hmm. and just getting to know yourself through the process and enjoying the process is something relaxing and exciting is um I think a, a new experience for me and will be for a lot of people who try this activity out with us. Is there any, at any point when you are sort of studying to be a curator, is that something that you study? Do you study to be a curator? What's the process for anybody that might be interested in becoming an art curator or a museum? What are the things that you have to do in order to get there? Yeah, well, 
the, the profession has changed a lot in the sense that now there are quite a few programs that are curatorial studies programs. I did not attend one. Um, my background is strictly in, in the theory of art history. So I have a, a bachelor's in art history and then a master's in modern and contemporary art specifically. And part of my master's course was to incorporate curatorial studies, but I didn't necessarily study to be a curator. I think the most important thing when you're, when you're considering this as a profession is to just make sure that you know about the art that you that you study art history that you're aware of you know different artists that you like especially if you're going into contemporary art curating mm -hmm. so just having an opinion and having a voice um and knowing exactly what kind of curator you want to be is is a, is a solid start and just also sort of keeping yourself open to learning about new artists new ideas because this is an ever-changing field you know, artists are contributing to it every day. Curators are contributing to it every day. So it's important to sort of keep your eyes and ears open. But my trajectory was really more of, a, of an academic one. And I felt as though curating was a really great way to tell stories. And you can tell incredible stories through, through exhibition planning, through exhibitions themselves, using, um, you know, other, other artists' artwork. Mm -hmm. And the artist as poet is definitely a reflection of that. You know, I'm telling the story of, of, of the poem object that was defined in 1942, what that means, how it's been redefined over time, how contemporary artists have, have subverted it. So, you know, just keeping, keeping an eye on stories that you want to tell and thinking about how you want to tell them is probably the best way to, um, to get started really how has it been different from your previous years now that we just as a whole have gone through or are still going through a pandemic how did, how did that change the curator process for uh sp specifically for this exhibition artists as poet but in general just working in museums well i mean it, it's definitely not lost on me that i essentially curated this show or, or did the majority of the planning for this show while working from home which is unique and 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 a lot of the things that are normally accessible to me or readily available to me were not so you know we have this really incredible 3d model of the museum by you know by our mm -hmm. offices upstairs and i wasn't able to use that because i was at home so i was really envisioning the exhibition um, in my head, I was really thinking about the artworks and I, and I left a lot of it to chance, mm -hmm. which is, I think why maybe this activity for me is so exciting because it taught me to be okay with the fact that you're not going to have all the answers at the beginning and the pandemic and just the, the, the pre-planning of this exhibition was very different than it otherwise would have been had I been in the museum. So once I was physically in the space, you know, and I was with the prep team and the registration team and we were able to move the artworks around a lot of things changed inevitably as they do mm -hmm. but the the pre-planning was definitely what was most unique um a little bit uncomfortable at times but i act, i think it all worked out for the best i think that it taught me um it taught me that it's okay to not have everything figured out before the exhibition you don't have to necessarily be married to the idea of one work being in a particular space or on a particular wall you can let things shift you can let things change and the, i firmly believe and this might sound a little a little bit kooky but i think that the objects tell you what they want i think that objects will make themselves available for you or they won't and once you're in the space if you just if you just listen to them if you just pay attention to what it is that they need in order to shine you can make better decisions that the the viewer will appreciate although they don't really necessarily know what that process was you know was like so just letting go of control was the main thing <laughs> that this pandemic definitely taught me about the exhibition planning process and i think in many ways art making for some artists every artist is different so every time i'm sure you have felt this any artist that you speak with is like opening up a new universe yeah but I know for me, making art also is about letting go of control and allowing the materials to tell you where you need to go. And that's kind of what I'm using here on my sketchbook is um, sort of like this idea of just seeing the materials that I have available and mm -hmm. then creating a composition based on it. So I've used 
my collage piece, but I also use uh, markers to make my flowers, my lines, and just working on filling up the entire space using the wa solid watercolor as well. Um, what was going on over there? <laughs> so I'm trying to create a, a landscape, a loose landscape as a background. Mm -hmm. And my cutouts kind of inspired me because I've got an elephant and I've got this young woman and she's, she seems to be screaming. And I like the idea of her kind of yelling across the field. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of um, letting out whatever you're feeling, whatever passions you're feeling. So I figured I can put her in like a very peaceful landscape where she can, you know, release all that energy and frustration, all that frustration that's been pent up for all of us in 2020. <laughs> and, um, and there's someone, there's someone there to listen. And I actually think my theme is also one of self-reflection. And um, I decided that I'm going to use, um, it's not a poem, but I am going to use some text. This, this is a sketchbook that can also serve as a diary. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's something that you can take around with you anywhere you go. And maybe if you're feeling creative at a particular moment, even in the office, whenever it is, whatever it is that you're doing, um, you can just pull out your little sketchbook and make some art. And I think that that is one of the things that has really kept us all um, engaged yeah. in during these times. Yeah, I mean, uh, art has kept us going, right? Not just the, the visual art making, but also the words. Do you have a, a writing practice right now? Is that something that you do usually? So I, I'm one of those people who um, journals on occasion. Um, it's one of those ways that maybe it comes from my, my studies or just the way that I've gone through my schooling, but there's something really refreshing about putting all of your thoughts on paper mm -hmm. and letting them feel more manageable because of it, you know, like things feel less muddled once you organize them, once you put them down. And so for me, it's more of a personal practice, but obviously, you know, when you're, when you're curating a show, there's a lot of writing involved, you know, you're writing the labels for, you know, every artwork in the exhibition, you're writing perhaps an extended essay, you're writing, um, to contribute to a catalog. So, mm -hmm. so my writing practice is both personal and also a huge part of my job. And I, in my opinion, in order to be a good writer, you should be a, a reader. You know, you should be someone who enjoys other people's words and other people's um, writing. And that's how you can become better. So I think that for me, both are equally important. Taking the time to write, practice that, taking the time to read, hear other people's thoughts and finding different ways to express yourself and just getting out of that comfort zone, you know. I am learning so much about your process as a curator, Maritza. It's very, you know, it's very personal. I, I have the, the awesome privilege of working with all of the curators in the department, and I've worked with all of them closely on all of their exhibitions. And each one of us is so different mm -hmm. in terms of how we approach our shows, what the initial questions are that we ask, um, what our process is. And so, you know, even though curating is you know, research based and fact based. And there's a lot of, you know, a lot of that that goes into it. It's also a practice that is fundamentally personal in that mm -hmm. sense. I think similar to, to the artist practice in that, you know, you have your, your own process, right? You ask yourself your questions before you get started and, and you know what you want to tackle. I think it's the same for, for us. And so, you know, if you ask any curator what their process is like, you're going to hear, you know, a hundred different answers. And mm -hmm. I think that that's what makes the practice so so interesting and it's what fascinates me about working with artists too because i think we have that in common you know so even though you spend a lot of time on your own and if you're wondering what i'm doing right now i decided to round off the edges of both my back cover and my cover um i think this is gonna look really nice and um as a curator you really do work as a team don't you yeah it's not there's sometimes where you work on your own but you work largely as a team and it's a collaborative effort absolutely i mean the, the beginning stages i think are a little bit more independent you know you're you're thinking of your idea you're updating your checklist of works you're thinking about what works you want in the exhibition and so you're really kind of 
self-reflecting a lot. You're spending a lot of time in your own head. But once once you're 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 planning the actual physical exhibition, you know that's when when the registration team gets involved, and they are, in my opinion, the unsung heroes, the superstars. They're the ones who really make it happen. The prep team, they are literal magicians. I mean, they're the ones who put everything. <laughs> They'll on be the happy wall. to hear you say that. I mean, I I got to spend so much time with them while we were installing this show because there are so many works in this show, and I had the awesome, you know privilege of just watching them install and watching them move the works and, and seeing how much love and care goes into that aspect. Um, it's the part that people don't really get to see. And so it, it feels really nice to be there with them and, and to and to watch their process and just to appreciate what they do. But it's definitely a team effort. You know, I'm not the one in there hanging the works. I'm not the one in there taking them out of storage, unpacking them, uncrating them. I'm not the one doing the stuff that actually results in a real tangible exhibition that people can come and enjoy. So it's a, it's a team effort. And without them that, you know, there, there would be no artist as poet, you know? So I, I get a lot of the credit and I appreciate that, but it's, um, it's really only partially mine. You're you one. Know? Yeah. <laughs> the last finishing details to our accordion sketch box. This is my cover and this is my back cover and you can see inside it's my entire composition. I love very detailed work so I love it. that's very what surrealist. I did. Very surrealist, very surrealist, very inspired by the exhibition. You can see here I love it. And you incorporated text. I love that. I incorporated text. I did so in Spanish. This means in the space where the universe becomes a garden. I love it. And that was my attempt at making a poem. Perfect. That's a and poem then, object right there. That's it. A poem object inspired by your exhibition, Artist as Poet. What about your work, Maritza? Okay, so mine, as you can see, so I made a front cover and a back cover, and they sort of function together using the same color scheme. And then the inside, as I mentioned, I wanted something that was gonna pop. I wanted like a very peaceful landscape, mm -hmm. but also reference, you know, the way that I have always encouraged, especially young women to use their voice and to say what they need to say. So listen to me, I'm speaking, so that we can encourage people to listen to Absolutely. women and their voices. And I love the, the back too, because there's a slightly more surrealist element there. Yes. The la la la, which you can interpret in any way you like, but I kind of like the idea of, of what happens when, you know, men explain things to me and I'm just like, la la la. And I'm not really I'm not listening sometimes. Really listening. <laughs> but I just love that they kind of contrast and the colors are fun and pink is my favorite color. So, so and, that's my poem object. And we can use this, you can display this in different ways. You can either display just the abstract work or you can pick a side every day and display a different side of the story. Thank you, Maritza. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you for having me. Thank you everyone for joining us. Please share your artwork with the world. Hashtag TamDIY so we can see everything that you create inspired by our DIY videos.